What's your favorite place to be? Many of us have a happy place. It's that location that we go to either physically or mentally in our minds when life just doesn't seem to be going right. We go there when the stress is going to overwhelm us or we need to recenter ourselves. Mine is on a bald hillside in North Carolina along the Appalachian Trail where I camped under the stars after a day full of hiking and it was one of the final days of a 100 mile trek. I remember it being freezing cold that night, not too different from what we're experiencing tonight, but there wasn't a cloud in the sky. So I refused to set up my tent and I slept with my glasses on so that as I rolled over in my sleeping bag and I could look up and see the stars above me. The stars are never more beautiful than when there aren't any other lights to distract you. So for me, looking up at the stars that night brought such peace and calm to me that it has become my happy place and remains my happy place almost 10 years later. Even though I can't get there without doing the trek again, when I go outside, I almost always look up to try to see the stars, even though it's a little more difficult to do in the suburbs of Fort Worth than it was along the trail. Maybe this worship service is your happy place. Maybe this is the place that you come to to find peace or to find solace or to recenter your life after a year that has led you in a thousand different directions. For some of you, major transitions and changes have taken place in your home. The loss of a parent, the moving away of a child, downsizing your home because all your kids have moved away, but that's the home that you raised your family in. Others of you have lost your sense of purpose and your sense of direction this past year. Then others of you, this has been a year full of success and wins. A year that's been full of blessings and peace and you're here to celebrate. Honestly, it all boils down to the reality that I don't know what has led you up to this moment in your life. I don't know if you're here to escape the craziness of your household or if the craziness of your household is who dragged you to this worship service I don't know why you're here but God does he knows exactly why you're here even if it's not for him but I can promise you this that God is here because of you And God is here because of me. There are literally hundreds of reasons that each of us is here tonight, but there is only one who is here because of each of us. And he's come for both you and me. Whatever has led up to this moment in your life, God has come for you tonight. That's what this worship service is actually about. It's not about family tradition or the photo op or even the candlelight singing of Silent Night. This worship service is about God coming to us, for us, to save us, to love us, to call us his own. But we tend to forget that, don't we? Christmas becomes a part of a season of so many other things. A bit like trying to see the stars in the middle of downtown Fort Worth. At best you get a glimmer, but too often it just gets washed out in the midst of everything else. That blur of lights, that busyness, that noise that we experience is caused by us though. It's caused by us letting everything around us drown out our attention pulling us away from that which should focus us and center us and cause us to pause and to reflect, to rejoice with hopeful anticipation. So instead of trying to be one more distraction and a myriad of other distractions, God calls us together. And instead of fighting for our attention, God draws our attention to himself. See what happens when you go out of the city and into the country or even into the wilderness 
is that instead of seeing a blur of light in the night sky, you actually get to see the individual stars. And instead of seeing a wash of light, you see each one as God designed it to shine. And your attention is actually drawn to each of them instead of none of them. That's what this worship service is about. It's to draw our attention to the one who came down among us. Who has come as our Savior and Redeemer, not just one more event on our calendar. Because our God and His great love for us and His desire to call us His own for eternity stepped out of the heavens, stepped off of His eternal throne, and He took our flesh. And He came into a small village that very few people cared about. And He came to two people that before His birth almost nobody cared about. And many forgot after He was born. He came in such a way that others had to announce his presence in such a way that it drew people into him. It turned their attention. It turned their hearts. It turned them away from the distractions of life. And it brought them into his peace-filled presence. In this very moment, this evening, we, are, we remember That God draws his people to himself. And he takes them to the cross. Where he, God himself, would take their sins and our sins. Their failures and our failures. Their fears and doubts and our fears and doubts. He takes them to the cross and he leaves them there. It's in this very moment this evening that we remember that our Savior doesn't stay on the cross. But instead breaks free of death's oppression and rises from the grave on Easter morning so that in Him, you and I have eternal life and that even death itself cannot contain us. In this very moment this evening, we remember that our Savior, the true light of the world, has drawn us to Himself, has removed distractions of the sin-filled life, So that if nothing else tonight, he can remind us that we have victory in his own death and resurrection. Do you feel that peace? Do you feel the peace that is in our Savior Jesus Christ as he draws you into his presence? It's not a peace that the world gives, it's a peace that only Christ can give. It's a peace that actually transforms our reality because His death and resurrection is our victory over sin, death, and the devil. But we know from the Christmas story that we can't stay in this moment forever. Nobody stays in this moment of peace forever. In fact, in the Christmas story, nobody stays in the stable Nobody stays in that moment of peace and joy. Life continues. The the shepherds go back to being shepherds. And Jesus' own family has to flee because of King Herod's edict to kill all the baby boys two years and younger. So even the Prince of Peace and his own family can't stay in that moment of peace. You and I can't stay in this moment of peace forever either. Because from here we have to go home. To whatever that may mean for each of us. And and each day brings a new set of challenges and struggles all of its own. We face circumstances that will try to overpower us. that, That will test every ounce of strength that we have within us. See, this is where I find a prophecy from the book of Isaiah so incredibly helpful. And hopeful for each of us. I'm not referring to that prophecy from Isaiah 9 that we read just a few minutes ago, I'm referring to a different one. If you'd like, grab your Bibles and you can read along with me on the screen. Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah writes this. 
How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Who publishes peace. Who who brings good news of happiness. Who publishes salvation. Who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth into singing. You waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. So depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her and purify yourselves. You who bear the vessels of the Lord. For you shall not go out in haste. You shall not go out in flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. See, these are words of hope that were written to a people enduring a great amount of tribulation as they were taken into exile. They were ripped from their homes, and they were taken into a foreign country, and they were awaiting the fulfillment of God's promise that they would be able to one day return to their homes. An entire generation and a half died waiting for that promise to be fulfilled. But you and I have experienced this Messiah coming. We have experienced the promise and the hope and the peace that he brings. You you and I know the Messiah that has brought about the redemption to the people of God who has bared his holy arm and has done what nobody else could. He has conquered sin, death, and the devil. This is not a prophecy that is waiting to be fulfilled in our lives. This is a prophecy that has been fulfilled in our Savior Jesus Christ. He is the one who bared his arm before all the nations, not in a battle of strength, but in humility and love. And he bared his arm on the cross to draw us into him. To show us grace and mercy unlike anything the world has ever seen. He came as the light of the world in the midst of the darkness. So how do we go from here? How do we go from this moment of peace and joy back into a world that leads us into anything but peace? Notice that even Isaiah in his And his exaltation tells the people to not stand still. He says, don't stay there. Jesus and his family couldn't stay in the Gospels. After Jesus' ascension into heaven, his own disciples had to go. They had to depart because he commanded them to go to the ends of the earth. But Isaiah says, don't go in haste. Don't go in flight, meaning don't go out in fear Don't go out in uncertainty. Instead, go in hopeful anticipation because God is with us. Emmanuel. So we go in hopeful anticipation. We go out in joy because of the peace that we have experienced here. We go out in peace because of the reminder of the victory that has already been won for us in His death and resurrection. We go out in love because Christ Himself has drawn us into Himself. And in Jesus Christ, there is room for nothing else. Nothing but love. We go out from here and from this night because there is good news that needs to be shared. We are to be the beautiful feet that are upon the mountains, proclaiming the awesome deeds of our Messiah. We are to be the moments, the experiences, the people that draw others into the peaceful presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we do this in our daily lives through gospel planting. We become the ones who draw attention not to ourselves, but to God who is working in us and through us.
What I loved most about that night on the hillside that I spent under the stars was not actually the individual stars themselves. It was what the collection of the stars, in contrast to the black night sky around them, did to me. That collection of stars against the pitch black sky drew my attention in such a way that even the sun in all of its glory during the day has never been able to do. You see, we together are the light of Christ in the world of darkness. It's actually what we do together with God in our midst that draws people into Him. It's actually what our Savior does in us together that brings others into that moment, into that peaceful presence of our Savior, so that they too know the hopeful anticipation that we have in Jesus' birth, His death, His resurrection, and his return. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.